What's up, everybody? This is your boy Chris Reed back with another video. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the live stream. Now, on this video, we're going to be first talking about the ultimate tutorial to making beats in Reason 12. That's right. So, we're going to jump into Reason right now. And we're going to actually check out some of what Reason has to offer, give you guys the ultimate layout of producing, making beats inside of Reason Studios. So I hope that you guys are interested in that. We also have something exciting happening on this live stream. I'm hoping that this live stream is the one to push us over the edge into the 6,000 range. So let's be hoping for that. In the meantime, let's actually give you guys some content in terms of how to make beats inside of Reason. So when we open up Reason first and foremost, when I go to my Reason screen, when we open up Reason first and foremost, we're going to be greeted with this rack here, okay? And the first thing we just need to realize is that the rack is where your instruments live. This is where you add instruments into your song. You also can add them from your sequencer as well. So if we wanted to, we could just start dragging in instruments from the browser window into the sequencer. So for example, if I wanted to add drums, I could go up here and search for drums and there's some drums that gets found and we can just add that into the sequencer. And now it's already ready for me to just go ahead and start playing around with those drums. So we have that option to use either the rack to drag and drop in instruments Right, we could just drag and drop in an instrument from the rack using instruments. And of course, these are reason instruments that I'm pulling up, but you also could go ahead and scroll down until you get into your VSTs. Here is Analog Lab 5, for example, and you could just pull up Analog Lab, open the VST, and then go to the sound um, that you're interested in using. You could be able to do that in reason as well. So drag and drop uh, different instruments and um, then you'll be able to use them in that manner. So for example, here I have my uh, roads here. Hopefully you already heard me playing that. Um, with your VSTs also though, one thing that you're gonna realize is that when you load up your VST, you're pretty much gonna get a Blake VST every time. But what you could do is once you find an instrument that you like, you could just go ahead and hit save. And now you can save this as rows from analog five. And then we can save that in our folder, find that inside of here. And then maybe we could also create a favorite list because favorite lists are really good and really important for getting your music and getting to it very quickly. So you could create a favorite list as well. And we'll call this analog analog lab five so now that we have this favorite list i'm just moving around up here and i'm also going to go into my library find those patches so that i can find that analog lab patch that i just created and then once i actually find that patch i'll be able to go ahead and drag that into i'll be go ahead i'll go ahead and drag that into our favorite list so let me just find that analog lab roads here it is roads analog lab and then i can drag that into there as well and now we have it so when we go to load it up instead of having a blank analog lab we'll have the roads that we actually found so now we have those roads there and so you pretty much will just go through and find all of the patches and presets that you like and that you want to hear inside of your music. First, you find those different patches, save those patches, and then you have the access of being able to use them all over the place. Also, we have this favorite list as well. But if I wanted to, I could just drag this patch into this area as well. So now I know those are my favorite roads and I could just have that ready to go anytime that I want it, right, per se. So with Reason, um, one thing that I really like using is players, especially if we're talking about making our music from the start. Of course, we always have the availability to use the piano roll and our MIDI keyboard as well. So I have some drums here from, have some drums here from Battery. use these drums as well and what we've been doing lately on the channel is we've been doing r&b so i got my sequencer set up here with the intro hook and verse section using block mode to just be able to 
um, give myself a certain area that I can work in. So I'm going to work in this hook area first. We're just going to hit this P and that's going to create a loop around this hook area. And I'm going to actually draw, uh, start playing in some of my drums that I want to use for this track. I think we're going to go like a nice low 85 BPMs. Okay, cool. So um, I'm going to quantize that and we're going to just go ahead and drag this clip in. So where we are, you know, right where we want it to be. I'm going to quantize on eighth notes. So it looks like that's where we want to start. Cool. And if I want to add more to this drum, using this exact instrument then i can just press three on my number pad or i can come down here uh, to dub and i can create as many of these dubs as i want and then that way i can just add in some layers to those drums so let's add this uh little shot here Just kind of setting a setting the ambiance for this R&B track here, and that's what it's something that I can do. But if I want, I can actually click onto. I can click onto any one of these, and I can hold Control and press D, and now I've completely duplicated it. So now that I've duplicated it, I can go back to our drums battery four on that duplicate one, and then I can find maybe a different patch that I want to use for some different drums. Say I like that hi-hat that's in this folder, so we'll add that hi-hat there. We're just going to add some subtle little hi-hats in there to just, like I said, just continue to create that ambiance that, listen, we're, we're, we're doing some R&B today. And I'm going to go ahead and add in some reverb into these drums as well. I'm going to use that by using my send file on this channel. To get to the mixer from the sequencer, I'm going to press F5. And then I can just turn on this effects and it's going to turn it on for me. So you'll hear the reverb coming in. And that is actually being generated by this ROM here from Native Instruments. And I can select a different preset out if I want uh, from here. So let's say we want to go something large. I like Stardust, so we'll keep Stardust. So that's how we can add in some reverb, for example, for these drums. So now we need to add in like, you know, some melodies, some chords, and we can do that by using another instrument or, um, that we have. Of course, we do have those rows that we loaded in earlier. So maybe we find something like that that's nice that can go along with these drums.
let's add that in. So adding that in, we're just gonna go ahead and we've been playing on our, our MIDI keyboard. So we're gonna continue. But I'll show you guys some ways that you can create beats without having a MIDI keyboard as well using Reason. So let's go ahead and add in these chords into this song. So there's a chord that I didn't like that I played. I'm going to go ahead and just stop my music and delete that. So highlighting the notes and deleting that. Let's play this back instead. So there is another chord that I feel like I want to add in there, but first I'm going to let that play through the first time all the way through for the first four bars or so. And then on the second bars, I'm going to add in that other chord that I'm hearing. So, so we were playing. And I'm maybe hearing that. So I have this B in the bass. I can count down by six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and that will give me a tritone. So just a little music theory for you. I can play that same chord with either an F or a B, right? So now let's go ahead and add that into the track. that I like to do whenever I'm making beats in reason is like lay down a foundation. So like that would be a foundation. But of course, like those roads might not catch everybody's attention. You know, I like roads. I like acoustic sounding, you know, instruments and things like that. Things from Neo Soul. I have my whole little Neo Soul favorite list right here that you can see as well. Um, and, and that's one thing that I do suggest that you create uh, favorites and different lists that you can use in order to be able to go in and tap into different kinds of sounds. But honestly, when I'm listening to this, I'm just listening like, hey, this doesn't sound as modern as I would like it to sound. So I want to think about in terms of like in concepts, like what are some more modern sounding instruments instead of like using this Rhodes? That's dope for like, you know, neo soul and maybe some classic R&B. But what's something like more modern sounding? Right. And so it would be something like a lot of pads or something that has like a lot of ambiance, a lot of voice and maybe something that we can do like some halftime stretching to for example. So this would be something that I would do next. I would find an instrument inside of Reason. So I could go to the factory sounds, or I could go to Reason sounds and just select pads. And I can just select these pads until I found a pad that goes well with these chords, for example. So I'll turn off the chords and then we'll go ahead and listen to some of these pads. <laughs> actually really like that a little bit but I'm looking for something a little more organic if you will so that's a good sound because it has a lot of movement in it so I'm gonna take that sound and I'm gonna bounce it place uh, what I'm gonna do is after I bounce it in place I'm going to reverb it and I'm gonna stretch it so that's gonna give me that halftime kind of feel to it if you will um, so first we're gonna pitch it down 12 which drops us down an octave here's how it sounds actually I think that that's perfect right there I'm just not gonna do anything else to that and I think we can just loop that first part a couple of times. 
until and then we could have the second part so just so that you guys can see it i'm going to color code these a different color so here's dark blue for example and this one is different we we'll color this one a different color as well let's just do red so now you can see the two different parts uh, that we have going on here so we took that pad we bounced it we pitched it down and now we have this sound So we can bring the rose back in. But now our rhythm has changed because we're just doing these two chords. We'll copy those over. And I think we need to do this one right here. Yeah, that sounds good. And so from here, like what I would start doing is I would start like listening for something that I'm trying to think of, like, where can I take this beat? So I might start humming something like I hear like different melodies like da da da. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. You guys probably can't hear the music anymore. I did that for your safety. But now you can actually hear what it sounds like. So I might start like thinking of melodies like. And we want to fix this guy. with those nice chords that we added in. Nice little build up. Da -da 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 -da. Maybe something like that. So like what you could do is you could like try to find that on your keyboard and you'll be perfectly fine with doing that. Or you could just record that in with a microphone. So if you have a microphone plugged in uh, to your uh, audio interface and you have a melody that you hear in your head, you could just sing that melody out. Even if you don't sound great singing the melody, you could just go ahead and just attempt to try to sing that melody out. And then you can transfer that melody uh, to your other instruments. Right. So I know I'm going to sound terrible when I'm doing it, but it's all in the theory of teaching and, and in um, creativity. So let's just give it a try. Okay, cool. I saved you guys from hearing my terrible singing. But with that being said, we have this melody here that has been generated by my my voice. And what I can do is I can go in here, highlight all of these notes, hit correct. Correct pitch on reason is really dope. It's really good as long as you know how to actually use it. So if I wanted to just make this as robotic and stale as possible, I can go over here, hit correct first, hit my fine tune, which makes everything just be on the same semitone, same um, um, sense, the sense in between different pitches. We want everything to be on different pitches. And in our voice and in different instruments, there's always drift in different pitches. There's never just like a constant stream of sound unless you're playing it like from a MIDI device or MIDI instrument. So if I want to just have it as plain, like I said, as possible, I'm going to turn this drift to zero, right? And even this transition, I can turn this to zero. And now this is just going to give me a super plain sound that you're going to hear. I told y'all it was bad if, if you didn't believe me at first. But now I can take that, I can drag that here, and it'll give me like a semblance of what I was actually saying when I was singing. <laughs> And 
now I can play around with these notes. Da 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 da. I'm gonna put these all to the same velocity. And now I can see, you know, visually what that melody was that I was playing, you know what I mean? So I can see it's da. So, you know, me personally, I play MIDI better than I draw in MIDI, but it's definitely, if you take your time, you will be able to do it, right? So we can come in here and just find this melody and we can actually like, you know, structure it out. So we sung the melody first and now we're just gonna actually go in and, and play the melody through. So we need to go to G and instead of G, it was going somewhere else. C to B flat. Cool. So let's focus on that first part of that melody there. So the melody is going faster than what we're doing. So we need to actually tighten this guy up. Let's pull this one over and let's quantize also. I think that's too heavy of a quantize. Let's send it back to 1 16th notes. All right. All right, this one needs to move up. This one can come down and then this one will come here and we will end on adding in another note, this one. F to G, let's go F and put this one on G. And we need to add in another note here and we will move this one up so we have a little slur. And let me play it with the drums as well so we can hear. Should come in right there. So we can hear it's just kind of like fast, right? We just need it to be like slower. So we're going to stretch this guy out.
cool. And this really, to me, is just why it pays to like learn how to play keyboard. <laughs> And then right on with that one. Okay, now let's say everything together with that. Okay, so let's get rid of that vocal because we don't need to hear that guy. So here's another thing that you could do if you have this melody that you've created, instead of like, you know, you going in and changing things, you can use reason to hit like alter notes, for example. And when you hit alter notes, it's going to move these notes around. So you have a different melody. So now we have a, a different melody there. I'll even hit alter notes on this first part. So now we have two different versions of that of that melody there that we could use, right? And I just wanted to show you guys like how you can get around the piano roll and you know do different things. Creating in the piano roll is one of those things that you know either you do it or you don't do it. And the more that you practice it, the more you learn it, the more that it becomes natural to you. You know, so for somebody like me, I'm definitely much more skilled at playing on the actual piano, and that's perfectly fine uh, for me. But that is one way that you could do it. So you could sing the melody, and now you have the actual notes, and then you can actually learn it, and then you could just do it like that, or you can actually play it. And so I'll do a little bit of playing so that you guys can hear what I mean by that. Alright, so let's actually record something in there because I was hearing like a melody and we'll do the same thing. We'll kind of find another instrument that feels a little bit more modern that we can drop into this thing. Let's go ahead and play that. So I really like that 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 last ending part that we have and I kind of want to like 
build on that. I want to build on that last sound. So I'm going to add in some different elements, right? So to build up that last, da, 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 to build that last part up, man, we really got to like play some stuff around with that. So let's add in some piano. Let's add in some strings. And of course, everything is going to be based upon, everything's going to be based upon the style and the genre that we are that we are in right so um i'm going to set up uh in my contact i'm going to have alicia keys and as well as some session strings and we're just going to kind of set that up as like a dual a dual thing that's going to play here and um and one thing that i like about reason i feel like reason makes creating combinators like this a whole lot easier um, like I know that there's a way to do it in contact, but it should just be as simple as what I just did. But since it wasn't, I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. And I know I have Alicia Keys here and I'm just going to go ahead and hit combine. So now I know I have a piano. I know I have a piano there and then I can just duplicate this by hitting control D. And when I flip the rack around, I'll be able to uh, go ahead and connect this guy. There's even a faster way to do it. So now I have, instead of one piano, I have two pianos. But what I could do also is hold control shift and then drag this down. And now it will duplicate and it will route by itself. Control shift down, it'll duplicate and route it by itself. So what I was trying to do was create a combinator, a combination of sounds. So where we have some strings, we have this piano. So we're gonna drop in the session strings here and we're going to play that same riff that we did. So now we have this nice combinator where it combines these different instruments together and you can very easily create many different combinators and you can get all into the different combinators that reason has to offer. I'm just going to change uh, one of these sounds. So I know I have Alicia Keys playing as one sound. I'm just going to add in this retro machines here. They have this like, you know, like a, like a synthy kind of sound, brass sound. So we're just going to add that in. And so now we have, you know, these different instruments, you know, happening in up, up in here. And there's like a lot of different things that you can do with the combinator. Because for one, I could create a line mixer instead. And now I can just go ahead and, and um, un, unattach these devices and instead add them into the line mixer. And so that way I'll be able to control the volume inside of Reason a lot easier. I just need to send this master out here. <laughs> So now I can control uh, more things. So here's our strings. There's our little synth sound that we have. And there's our piano. So let's send our piano to the right a little bit. Let's send our strings to the left a little bit. We'll keep our synth in the middle, but we'll kind of make the sound a little softer. And now we can, you know, create that sound that I was saying for this remaining remainder part here. We're just going to go ahead and set this here so that we can play this in inside of our piano roll. So let's go ahead. I'll show you guys right here. Let's add it in.
just play that you know that part up a little bit more reason has a lot of different like loops and things that you can add in as well you know different percussions and different different ideas that you can add in there as well right so um let's add in something to kind of you know create some ambiance or some atmosphere around there uh, we can go into our patches into our sounds we can go to effects and let's see if we can find a, like an effect that's like i saw some like a swoosh technical swoosh <laughs> Tons of different sounds. Little techno wind. Little wind. It might get a little messy. But lots, lots of nice little different effects that you can add in, right? You can go crazy with the like DMB type stuff, right? So you could really find some cool different things to add in here. I think I like that. Let's add that into this part. So what I'm noticing about that is a very short thing. I'm gonna bounce. It. And bounce into place really is one of those things that like should become your best friend. <laughs> Whenever you're like, in reason but e even in other dolls you know just bouncing using audio clips because now i can see this audio clip i can see what's happening with it i can stretch it out by holding control i can stretch this guy out <laughs> And now I can just, you know, add in a little bit of that ambiance. I can hit S and turn off the snap. And then that way that just, you know, it, it builds into the part that I want it to build into. Uh, and that could be something that I could do, right? Let's see, transpose down. I like some of the other different instruments. I try not to use too many of them, like in every beat or whatever, but like these digi effects, impacts, things like that. I like using a lot of these. So like like this uh this wipe here, this this wipe, impact wipe. I like using these in, in some of the tracks. It just kind of adds in a little bit of drama, a little bit of suspense into the track. <laughs> Right where I needed it to be so we'll just go ahead and put that like that and we'll hear what it sounds like so you know what's crazy is like we're, we're making this beat and we've done some different things and the one thing that we don't have one thing we haven't added in is bass and i really like the bass that's inside of reason so again going into our browser you can get to your browser by pressing f3 by by the way going into our browser and going into bass you can find acoustic bass electric bass synth bass and they have some really great patches a lot of patches that i like a lot the most come from the subtractor but you really can just find different bases that you know sound great as well that come from different instruments so we definitely got to find a nice r b bass they have a they have a patch called r b bass and um i like that one as well and you know we can just make it easy on ourselves and just find r b bass and we can just use that bass let me see r and b let's go into factory go to subtractor patches we'll go to that bass section and we'll find that r b bass there it is r b bass 
So something very low and, you know, subby. We can even increase that by using one of their effects, Audiomatic, going to bottom. And it just kind of just gives you even more so. And if it works, it works. If You know, you don't have to recreate the wheel or anything like that, right? So... Adding that bass in really, you know, helps the, the song. Helps that song to develop. So we're playing with our MIDI keyboard again. Let's use this other MIDI keyboard. And we've just been building up this hook section, you know, building this hook section up. So I want you guys to be able to see uh, the notes as they come in. And I'll also let you see the keyboard as I'm playing it. Let's go this way. Could do that. adding more elements into the track from this point so now for here we're going to add in more of those keys i like the way the roads are sounding have a nice little bass a nice little uh, uh like a nice little foundation and we also have that pad that we added in that had that movement into it that was a really nice addition if i will say so myself we have the effects kind of leading this from the out part of the hook back into the beginning part of the hook and we have our drums kind of doing exactly what we need them to do so now we can add in some more you know piano some more keys uh, maybe a few more percussion to kind of feel in this hook and we're going to take that melody and transition it into another kind of sound so it's not just the roads but for now we're going to add in these roads into the track <laughs>
And so just because I have been checking out Contact uh, as of late, I'm going to just try one of their new um, players, one of their new Contact players, one of their new um, from the Play series. This is Duets. And it's kind of cool because it has like this vocal but synth but like acoustic feel to it. Like in other words, like the sounds kind of sing a little. They have this like singing, like it's a nice little plug. I can really see something like happening with that. Because it has that nice like, you know, right? Like that nice kind of feel to it where it is creating this kind of vibe, you know, this kind of vibe. And now we just got to kind of get the melody down with it. Uh, something like that could work so i tried out a couple of different ways that we could bring that vocal pluck in and i think that that's one way that kind of works a little bit as well so let's go ahead and drop that into our track <laughs> So let's go ahead and quantize that guy real quick and let's take a listen. At the same time, I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to try to find another um, something that's not so much of a pluck and something that's more of a lead so I can add in more melody and, and more of a lead into this. So we're just going to hit control D and go ahead and drop that guy in and then we can search for we can search for another kind of sound instead of that pluck. We can look look for something that something that has more of a lead to it. The plucks in this guy is really good. I like that. So let's get into lead. Here we go. I think we can do the melody that we did earlier. There's a lot going on with that. A lot. Let's see if there's a way we can take out that. Uh, yeah, it has this like weird. I don't like that. It has this like uh, distorted sound to it. Yeah, maybe that one won't work. Yeah, 
Something like that I think will work. Something like that I think will work. <laughs>sometimes i just gotta like stop and like listen to the track and just like really like hear what's happening inside of the track to see like where can we go next with it you know what can we do with it and i think that for sure that lead let's add that lead in there because i think that that was giving us some some good vibes so we'll go ahead and go to that lead and we'll add that lead in there right now where is my section here we go so let's add that lead in about that last part i think that our notes should be different yeah we should do different notes i think that should be our notes there so we'll add that in And that follows the chord structure because the chord structure starts with D on our top note. So that actually gives us our better sound there. And then, of course, because we're adding things into that section, we need to add in more things into that section to, you know, really draw that that part out. You know, really draw that part out and make it sound, you know, as grand as we want. So I'm hearing like a bell, but I don't want to just go to like the dry glockenspiel kind of type situation. But I do want to hear a bell. So I'm going to go into reason again. I'm going to find a bell. And a lot of times, I'm be honest with you guys, when it comes to these different um, sounds, is like I do like 
like a roulette type situation. I just go in here, I just find one, and then I'll start cycling through it until I hear one that I really like, you know. Um, a lot of times that happens. There's some that I know that I know for sure that I really like. Like if I get into instruments, for example, I'm going to use their um, Clang and like Pangea, stuff like that. So because those are their their like uh, organic model sounds or even object object is really good for sounds like that. So like Pangea world instruments, I might grab something out of there. And then also the orchestra sounds in the mallet section, you have a bunch of these different bells that you can choose from, but they're very like, you know, they're sampled. And so they're very like dry, if you will. But if you get into the synth bells, which is the folder that I went into, then you kind of get a mix of organic synth and you kind of get like a mix of, you know, what you could get out of there. So and the only thing I really want to do is add to this last part, this build. I just want to add something like that. Just add something into there. And so from there, I can already hear how we can take the elements that we've collected so far and duplicate those over, sorry, duplicate these over and start working on our verse section. So from here, I know that we're going to take out that main lead that we played. We can take that main lead out and then we can leave all of our elements that kind of transition us because I like the way that those sound. We can also probably take out one of these keys. So probably this top layer of keys. We got our drums, keep our drums. We got our bass, keep our bass. And now we have a verse section as well. <laughs> that way we've taken out enough elements to kind of give us a verse section and um, we can leave it how it is now sometimes I like to up the tempo a little bit to kind of see if this is more of a vibe or more of a bounce um, you can see I haven't saved my foul yet that's just something that I personally do. Um, but, you know, I just kind of like to make the track. And then once I get to a place where I really like the track, that's when I'll save it. I don't necessarily suggest that that's something you do. You probably should be, you know, saving your track and everything like that. But um, I've made so many tracks in Reason and just have done so much. to Now I'm just kind of like numb to it a little bit where it's like, all right, if I make something, I lose it. I'll get it back. I'll redo it or xyz making a bunch of excuses for just not stopping to find a name to name my track but nonetheless with this section now we could go ahead and change some things up and instead of doing a secondary verse we could you know instead use our blocks and now do our pre-hook to lead us back to our hook we could do something like that that's something we could do but first i want to hear how it sounds with the tempo raised just a little bit so we hear if it faster sounds or feels a little bit better
let's go back down to 85. I think really it's a split decision. I think the artist or, you know, the you know person that you're working with could probably decide, hey, I want it to be a little bit faster. Hey, I want it to be a little bit slower, you know, and they can, you know, choose between those tempos. But, you know, in terms of, you know, figuring out like which one do we want it to be like, you know, just kind of listen to it, play it through and just kind of see like, you know, which one do we like better uh, kind of is the situation that we would do there with that. But um, I'm, I think I'm somewhere in between or with faster. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it at 90 for now and uh, we'll just go with we'll just go with it like that. might work here yeah the more I listen to it the more I don't like it as fast so I'm gonna drop it down a little bit So pre-course or pre-hook, you know, um, something that leads us back into the hook. So if our original chord progression is, go a little higher. Sustain pedal. This is our original, then we can take it up or we can take, go down. We can take it up or we can go down. We can go. Let's try it down. Let's make sure we're on that one. We'll do a different a different build for that last part so I recorded it on this one a different build we'll have our bells come in I'll just take off the uh, bottoms of these notes 
And that's just to give us like a, a different vibe, you know? And maybe not do the exact same kind of build, but maybe do something different so we could go. So, because the original one is like. That's our original build. The second time around, I did. Maybe add something like that in there, so. Instead of doing the three, just do the two. So we're going down so low, let's bring it up a little bit. So we play on the same kind of melodies that we've been using, the same kind of rhythms in terms of like using threes. Um, and we use that to kind of create a similar sound or a similar melody that makes it familiar. We make this pre-hook familiar without it being exactly the same. So that's the goal that we're trying to accomplish when we're doing this this kind of pre-hook or like bridge type section. You want to have it like similar vibes, but not where it's like completely the same. leaving out our this sound here is like a really like that sound there is like um 
it's, it really establishes the track. So if we leave that out in the pre-hook, then we kind of like give our listeners something to, you know, look forward to for it coming back versus if we just had it going through the entire song kind of could get like repetitive and boring uh to say the least should do though is copy those chords over um, on our pad and then make sure that we bounce that and then you know drop it the 12 semitones so that we have you know the same kind of vibe that we had before so now we have this bounce I'm gonna just put it back on the same file as well keep the color change the only thing we did different to this for example is we just dropped the 12 semitones and I know somebody will probably say hey if we just instead like took these notes and then just drop them down an octave we will have the same sound but we won't actually have the same sound the sound changes when you hit that bounce when you hit a bounce and especially when you drop semitones um, using the pitch drop, it's a totally different algorithm than the sample being played at lower notes. So it's just one of those things as you're playing with pitch and rhythm, it matters the sequence of how you do things. It matters if you are playing the MIDI at a lower, you know, at a lower value or if you're dropping your pitch at a lower value. All of those things matter and it makes a difference. I'm not quite here. Bring that sound back. Here we go.
All right, so I added in this timpani sound. Cause I kind of want just something like I like a like a bomb or something, you know, kind of like like just a sound where it's like establishing. But I also want it to sound very muffled. So I'm gonna add in. I'm gonna take out some of these lows with a high pass filter, and then I'm going to take out some of those highs with a low pass filter. Cause I kind of just want it to sound like a woo, like a woo. I'm also going to take off that reverb and instead I'm going to add the reverb into the insert effects. Um, cause I just want like a, like a nice low boomy little reverb, maybe add a little filter on there too, just to make it even more subtle, even, even more subtle. I'll add in the original RV, RV seven. I think I took out too much of our low end. So let's add our a little bit back in. Yeah, literally just something just like that, like cinematic even. And just because we're having fun with that, you know, we can reverse into it and it'll kind of give us like a nice little build, a nice little build sound into that as well on the second time around. So here we have, here's our boom. Exactly. Uh, I'll turn off my snap and drag this a little bit more so we just get a little more um, coming at the end of it. we need an intro I don't typically like to start with the hook. So let's start with the verse instead. So we'll move all these things around. So we start with the verse. Thank you. 
this out. can even do something different with the drums on this first part like just not have the not have that snare coming in just trying to see if there was a softer sound i can play there instead like a lot of like with this you know and you can see our velocity it's like a lot of things happening i'm gonna control a to highlight all of the velocity and then we're just gonna like set them all to something similar and i'm also gonna make this a little smoother by connecting all of the midi notes by using our legato adjustments in the tool window we pull that up by pressing f8 and um, we'll hit the side by side and apply that so that way these notes just kind of extend into each other <laughs>
I feel like we've gotten to like the point of the track where it's like, yeah, this is pretty much the structure of the track, the foundation of the track. This is this is pretty much where we would be like, all right, cool. We got um we got something where we could build off of or we can just, you know, finalize it, right? So I wanna add in just like a little bit of piano towards the end to just kind of just fill it in a little bit more. that one let's do one more thing i'm gonna change about this uh piano is i'm just gonna change it to something that's a little more clean so it doesn't have all of the uh, the extra things process pianos is a really great sound you have the option of processing these three different pianos with different filters different eq cuts different effects um and when you combine them all together you get some really interesting sounds so the most heavily processed sounds sometimes don't even sound like pianos at all. Um, for example. Right. Um, but instead of having a super processed piano, you could also have a very clean piano as well so instead of something like that you can use like mixed models for example and now you just have a pretty clean piano as long as i can actually play it <laughs> correctly then it's all good but you know you can have a very simple piano that actually sounds like a piano right So process piano is just another one of those, you know, instruments inside of Reason. It has a great sound and whether you go heavily processed or minimally processed, you know, you can get a good sound. So I just wanted to change the piano sound so that we didn't have a very processed one into just a cleaner one. <laughs>
I like to add in like a different bass sound for like our beginning part or like, you know, different parts of the track to kind of, you know, give us a different feel because the main bass is this R&B bass. So instead of doing this R&B bass in like the intro, for example, we just do like a more uh, like a darker sounding bass, something, something that has like a little more ambiance to it. But a lot of the basses are like tech and techno and EDM and stuff. So like, do you know what I mean? I might even do something like that. like a whole nother zone and it's like unexpected All right, so now let's go into you know more of the mixing leveling part of this so it's important to you know be able to kind of mix your beats get them sounding how they should be sounding make room for different elements make room for different parts of the track get out of this clipped situation because right now if you look at our big meter we're definitely clipping we're peaking all over this track so we need to get our music to where that's not happening if I go to reset this, I don't want that continuously clipping all the time. So I like this have it's like a couple of different ways that, you know, I, I would go into my leveling process. There are some rules and tips and things that I would do like every single time. Um, and then there's, you know, times that I would do different things, like not just the same things. So, for example, a lot of times I would like start this mixing process by um, putting everything to zero. I'll put every all these faders to zero. Um, I feel like I've been doing a little bit of leveling here and there. So I'm not going to do that this time. This time I'm just going to pull everything down just a little since I already feel like I have like my levels like where I want them. And this time I'll kind of mix up. So like one thing that I'll do, there's different ways you could do it. I'm just going to go in here and just duplicate this battery so I can separate the drums. So I'll just duplicate this. I think I had like two different ones in here 
and um, I'll just go ahead and delete, excuse me, I'll go ahead and just delete these right here. And instead, I'll highlight this one and I'll go to extract notes and I'll hit explode and that will move all of the different notes that I had in there to their own lanes. Um, so now we have everything on its own lane and now I can drop things down so I can move this one to this copy and we'll just see what this actually is. So this is our kick. So now let's name this kick and we'll move this one down to its own track as well. I think this is the snare or oh, this is like some shakes. Cool. So now we have shakes there. Um, back on the original file. Looks like some pitch bin got in there. I don't think we need any of this. We can delete those two. We have this and this is just our snare. Yes, this is our snare slash rim sound that we had. And so now we have the three different shake snare and kick from that battery file and this is a second battery which is like some hat percussion that we did so we know that everything has been separated on these drums And I'm adding in a high pass filter to this snare just because I feel like it's a lot of low end there that I don't necessarily want or need. I'm just going to use this part. Shake should be okay, but there's still some low end there. We don't need that. So we're out of peak zone and that's good. That's important. So everything's kind of like out of peak zone for this kick though. I'm going to come in here to the show insert effects and I have this easy EQ guide, but essentially it's just a bunch of EQs and I've labeled them with different parts of, you know, like the EQ range. So for example, body kick, snap, kick, click, um, if we start turning these things up and down, then we get a different, you know, sound um, because it's going to EQ it. And this is just like a shortcut that I use when I use this combinator to help me just be able to say, OK, I want my kick to have a little bit more punch to it. So I come right here to punch and I can just drag punch up a little bit. So now we have our kick with a little bit of punch. We did take down some of the low end from our timpani earlier, so that should be good to go. Um, and I have a bounced timpani as well that will also need to have a little bit shaved off just so we don't have a whole lot happening there. thing I want to change about these is I want it to have um, instead of just that solid sound I want it to do that tremolo so I'm going to add a tremolo to this keys and so with the def we can make it hit left and right you know very hard or we can just you know lighten up on that
but overall I prefer to have it and I'm just going to drop in a compressor because there are some parts where it gets a little louder than I would like it to be so just going to add in this compressor here and then we're going to give it a little bit of output gain so it just levels off I'm going to take some of this low out so that's way too much we lose all the sound if we do that so just kind of back up off of it. This one is going to get the opposite treatment. This one, I'm going to actually make it mono. Um, I'm going to make it mono because right now it's not mono. So we're just going to find this guy. We could just turn our width down. stereo track So I do need to move some things around so that they are, you know, just move some things so that everything's not just coming in at the same place. One um, compressor that I like to use is this uh, two band compressor I like to use this sometimes it it makes the highs a little brighter and um, instead of like using filters you can kind of just compress different uh, parts of the frequency I actually want this to live in our like upper area. So I'm gonna like add in some presence around this 2K area. I want to
Okay, I'm going to go over here to our master section. I'm going to drop in this multi-band compressor. I like to do sweeping cuts so that's what i'm doing right now is i'm kind of lifting up this eq to just hear more of that certain frequency and then when i hear the sound that i don't like like if i want this to be more clear or less muddy then i need to boost the muddy part which is like that low end that low mid range boost it until i get to that range where it's like okay right there is where i don't like like i don't like that sound and then we just go ahead and cut that so let's listen to it so there's something right here that needs to come out as well up and just kind of room with a little bit of this.
So just upon listening after doing some of the leveling, uh, you can just kind of hear that there's some parts where um, some of the sounds are not like being allowed to like come through, you know, like so we got to make room for them. And sometimes that just means taking it all together. So this roads and our pad. Well, one thing about this pad is uh, we hiked up a little bit of this low end, this uh, mid sound, just a little too much. I wanted the sound to live there. a little better. A little fade out on this one. And yeah, that would do it for that. So for this track, um, we spent some time. So we're still at, uh, oh, look at that. Wow, we lost a subscriber. <laughs> man trying to get to six thousand subscribers guys um if you are not subscribed to the channel man hit the subscribe button i feel like it's gonna happen um soon um and i was trying to you know be preemptive about this but with that being said um r&b vibes we've been working on r&b vibes and everybody is not you know into producing r&b or even just slower tracks for that matter or anything like that but uh if you're looking for a tutorial to you know kind of look at like how do you structure these different things these different sounds come up with the chord progressions come up with the melodies um and then mix it give it a give it a mix you know give it a leveling and everything like that then you know what i'm saying i think that this 
you know, it's something that you could use to kind of, you know, tailor around your sound and kind of have something that you can use to kind of, you know, implement it into the way that you create your music. Uh, everybody makes music differently. Some people use um, MIDI keyboards. Some people use, you know, samples. Uh, some people use um players and like MIDI, you know, instruments or even just MIDI files, like just dropping MIDI files uh, into their music production software. And so Reason will allow you to do all of those things. Um, so just a few things that we looked at today in terms of this track, uh, when we take a look at, you know, the things we were doing with this track is we used... Um, okay. Uh, we, uh, we use a lot of bounce. We use a lot of bounce to audio so we can manipulate the audio a little bit, um, you know, doing some pitch changing, doing some tempo changing with the different things that we bounce the audio, doing some reversing uh, to kind of build, you know, anticipation or to kind of create ambiance. Um, we use that. So those are some techniques that we did inside of here. Uh, looked at, you know, searching for sounds, swapping out sounds, things of that nature, uh, getting your different rhythms down, um, some leveling, some EQing, uh, everything like that inside of this track. And also like creating, like how you create the music. How do you go from how do you go from the verse to the hook to the pre hook to the chorus to like, how do you go to these different parts of the track so we looked at that too like how do we move from intro to verse and then verse to pre-hook how do we come back around from pre-hook to the regular hook you know the course of the song so using transitions um staying within the key uh using different chords inside of the key those are a lot all of the things that we kind of looked at in this video with this track so um, hopefully I showed you guys, I tried to, what I tried to do was like go through and show like a lot of different things. Uh, uh, oh, oh, shout out to y'all, man. Hey, <laughs> I didn't understand at first. I didn't get it at first what people were saying, but now I'm understanding what I'm saying. So I appreciate that, man. Shout out to y'all. Uh, with that being said, um, there's different ways that you can, you know, go, you know, bounce in between those different parts and um you can be able to transition like i was saying using different parts of the scale different chords to actually transition from verse to hook and so using patterns as well you know in your music production if you're in a certain kind of key pattern key structure you can just keep that same pattern but maybe move your notes up move your notes down you know so mm -hmm. like we started with this track when we started with this track we just had basically two chords actually i did a whole bunch of chords and then i just simplified it that was another thing simplifying the beat so we started with this started with this guy I even added that in later, but I took that out. So, you know, we just kind of built on that. And instead of doing, we just went down. When it came to the pre-hook. Same kind of two chords, right? Same kind of two chords. This one goes there. This one went... Two different notes. So first we went from C to F, then we went from B flat to C. And all of it is in C minor. All of it is in C minor. So um, when it comes to R and B, right? Like for example, if we're just saying like a R and B, like oh R and B tutorial. When it comes to R and B, certain types of chords rain more than others so minor chords for example are, are more prominent than major chords um and sevenths and ninths and elevenths and thirteenths are more prominent than just triads right so a triad those are all triads um but you could do that same thing by turning it into a seventh or a ninth
and suddenly like you're in a whole nother lane right and you can even turn it up even more So the more like, you know, you get to adding in those different notes and tones and it gets to sounding more R&B, right? So regular C minor, C minor seven. It's just a different feel. And then you can even take that C. So this is C minor. And instead of playing C minor, you can drop this low C to a to a G. I don't know why I didn't do this earlier. And that's already. That's already sounds a little bit more R&B-ish. So regular chord, C minor, C, C, E flat, G. Just by taking the root note down to G sharp or A flat gives you this sound. Right? It's just... It's just those same chords. And then the next step would be like moving and transitioning from different kinds of chords. So like, you know, if I'm playing um, and I want to get to this F, I can just play that, right? But then I could do... Right. Or So if I'm just playing like, you know, like those are the two chords. But then if I learn the chords that kind of lead into the next track, then I can go. Step one, learn to play keys in the church. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of like, um, a lot of just like, like I was playing um, this Christmas earlier. So like, this is like the normal chords for this Christmas. Very major -y. But then, like, you jazz it up, you make it sound more R&B. You turn, in, turn them into, you know, different kinds of chords. So regular, this is a regular triad. And instead of just doing a regular triad, we can do a, a sustain chord. So um, here's our sustain chord. Regular triad, sustain. And then sustain inverted. Now we getting real beautiful, right? Regular triad. Like triads should like center you. Like there's a part in the, in this Christmas where it goes, the sun is praising and we're caroling to the, and then triad, triad. Right, as it does that turnaround, um, but you don't know, also you don't have to do those. You could do instead of doing that, you could do you could do something else. All right, you could do something. You could do something different. You could do something even even crazier than than doing that, and and that would be like you know an option, right? But overall, in general, it's just like adding in notes and it could be easy as like, like I said, like taking your, you know, low note, taking your low note, adding in a fifth um, or turning those triads to sevenths or even ninths. And that's like what a ninth is. It's like that sustain. 
it's just having like if this is the triad i take my second note i go down there's the sustain and then i can invert that put that d on top and now i have that sound where at first i had this sound then this sound right So that's an easy way to change that. This ninth, this is uh, the ninth. Uh, that would be a ninth. You could just take out that that third. You could play it like that. You know what I'm saying? There's different ways that you can play it there's different ways you can you know play it and make those keys sound more r&b instead of them sounding very majory um so there's some different things that you that, that you can do you know what i'm saying there's some different things that you can do 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 oh snaps hold on <laughs> let that thing rind on up man we are right there man we are right there man one more one more one more subscriber is all we need i feel like we're counting down to like new year's eve or something <laughs> oh snap hey there it is it just happened yeah Hold on, I got something for y'all. Where is that? Where is that? Boom! It's in there. There it is. 6,000 subscribers, everybody, man. Yeah, shout out to y'all, man. Appreciate y'all, man. Play this beat real quick. We need something way more hype than that. That's like not hype at all for hitting 6,000. I was supposed to have this ready. I got my I got my my fireworks going for 6,001. 6, Let's go. Turn them up. Turn me up. Oh, man, we got to play some celebration music up in here, man. Where the beats at? Where are the beats? Give me the beats. Oh, I should have had something ready earlier. Yeah, this is cool right here. I just want to say, man, shout out to all of you guys for subscribing to the channel, man. You guys are awesome. We are at 6,002. We are going up. 6,003, man. This is dope, man. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy New Year to you guys, man. We're going to bring this back for that, too, man. 6K. Hey. We did it! We did it! 
Let me go get my wife real quick. Oh, right. thank you, boo. Oh, you said it. I said it. You said it. Before the new year. We That's said it. Good. We said it. Yeah. Turn up. Hey. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you didn't know you was gonna be on the live stream. <laughs> Oh, my bad. I didn't know you didn't know you was going to be on a live stream. You look good, boo. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yes, man. Him downstairs said, y'all too cute. Oh, I see you. Uh, oh. Got my fireworks going, you know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. Yes, the celebration song. So we did hear his success. Oh, yeah. 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 This helped us get to that number, get over the hill. You know what I'm saying, man? All right, babe. Thank you so much. So what does this mean for the channel? It just means, man, we just keep going. It just means, you know, we're energized. We are pumped. Um, I've always tried my very best. I've always tried my very best to give quality content. Another subscriber just came through. Appreciate you, Aaron. Um, I always just... Tried to give good content, man. Just tried to share with people how to make beats on reason. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to say I'm the dopest beat maker or, you know, the dopest teacher either. Um, just saying that I just wanted to do my part. Uh, learned the program. Been using it for over 15 years now. So at this point, just pretty much it was just like whatever we know, I just want to give it back. You know, I've been a lot of times people have said, you know, thank you, Chris. We appreciate you. I didn't know you could do that. I didn't know how to do this. And so to me, that just means even if one person just learned something new, then that made a difference, you know, because now they can take that thing that they learned and apply it to their music and get better. And with that, man, we've had the one on one coachings this year where we actually, you know, uh, gave access to people to be able to just have Zoom calls, one on one Zoom calls where we talk with them and just, you know, help them with whatever they were trying to, you know, learn. And so a lot of people came through to the Zoom calls to just learn routing things, combinator stuff, sequencing stuff, automation, uh, mixing, layering, leveling, all of that type stuff too. So all of that came because of the channel because of the channel here um, and working with the channel and building it up, people felt, you know, comfortable to come, you know, hit me up and um, get a Zoom call one on one. So coaching uh, came through out of that. And so it was a lot of times where I was able to do a live stream and have a bunch of people in here and, you know, possibly learn some stuff and just grow and, and evolve, you know, with reason. And then there was times where I was able to help people one on one, right, help people, you know, just actually level up their production <laughs> if you will i just learn some things as we learn together you know what i'm saying so that has just really been a blast man it's been a blessing it's been a blast it's been a blessing to 
have so many people come through to the stream. And I'm an avid like YouTuber myself. Like I watch a ton of YouTube. I got the YouTube premium because I wanted to, I wanted to, I had the YouTube premium because I wanted to be able to watch YouTube videos without ads and just everything else. So like I watch a lot of YouTube videos, different speed runs, video games, different producers, music producers, um, just everything. And so for me, when I go to subscribe to somebody's channel, it means like you caught my attention, you taught me something. I want to see more from you. I don't watch like 10 of your videos and now I'm about to watch whatever the new thing comes in. Like, so a subscribe to me means a lot more than what some other people might put it as. And so I know like there's a lot of people who could add a zero to this number or three zeros, you know, instead of 6,000, they're at 60,000 or they're at 600,000 or at 6 million. And I know that it's a lot of people that's, you know, been putting out YouTube videos for a long time and they've been honing their craft. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm just trying to get better and just keep like keep doing it, essentially, like keep the consistency up and just keep uploading videos, keep doing live streams and hopefully, you know, feed the community. You guys have seen me on Reason Studios uh, YouTube channel as well. We'll probably continue to do that as long as I'm blessed to do that. And, you know, they want more videos from me, then I'll be continuing to do that as well. I did just see it come through. Shout outs. Another subscriber, 6006. Um, so I know I've I seen that come through on... Um, Reason Studios channel page that has been a blessing to be able to work with the guys over there at Reason Studios and you know just that whole process in itself just kind of just did a lot for you know my confidence and self-esteem like feeling like you know, all you know like these videos might actually be good you know they might actually be okay and and not go through that YouTuber cringe you know, cringe feeling where it's like, ah, you know, you can't look at yourself or, ah, this is, this is not good. Hey, please, if you have a question, man, please, you know what I'm saying? Let them fly. That's another thing that we did on this channel. Uh, I'm just basically just talking about, you know, just the channel and the work that we've been doing to get to this point. And we just going to keep going. Answering a lot of questions, man. People hit me up and they ask me questions and reason. And if I know the answer, then I give them the answer. If not, I'll go reach out to my buddies and people that I know also use Reason. I'll go look at the Reason manual, like whatever I got to do to find the information. But, you know, just wanted to be the guy that, you know, gives the information to the people um, in order so that they can learn a little bit of something. So I appreciate you guys. First and foremost, let me just say that I appreciate anybody that ever has come through to watch a live three. <laughs> I can't talk. <laughs> anybody who has ever come through to watch a live stream to watch a video to subscribe to the channel to become a channel member to have left me a super chat or a super sticker anybody that has left a positive comment anybody that has left a comment of, of critique anybody that has just come to the channel I, pre I appreciate you guys because this was something that's important to me in my life I want to see this continue to go and continue to grow like this is not something I'm just doing on the side this is this is this is man this is the thing i'm passionate about is building this community and building this channel so thank you guys from the bottom of my heart i appreciate y'all right. with that being said um <clears throat> uh 803 says what do you normally have the reason meter set on so by by um default if you come up here and you take a look at it let me see. Can I get a little closer? Let me do the application zoom. Uh, by default, it's actually, it usually starts with this mode, VU and peak. And there's a split. And <clears throat> when you're looking at the meter, the numbers up here are different, right? So this has 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. This has negative 8, 6, 4, 2, 0. So when you're looking at the meter, you have to pay attention to where it's actually playing the music because in this style it's kind of like you know it's hard to read so to me it's better to use them single single like single so when i start paying attention to the meters let me just say this when i start paying attention to the meter i put it on vu and VU is a, it, it's called like a mean, it would, like math. It's like an average, it's sort of an average 
of the sound over a span of time. And so it gives you an average loudness almost, but it's more like how music feels when you're listening to it versus peak, for example, versus peak, which is like, it's just the transience of the music. And most times the transience that's gonna be generating this meter to move is gonna be your kick and your clap, hi-hats, um, and anything like that that's going to generate a high transient when you look at the wave file. So peak is like there's points where you should use peak and points where you shouldn't use peak. You can have something peaking at zero. It's peaking at zero on the peak meter. But when you switch to VU, it actually is like very low. It's not even getting to zero on the VU meter. And what that tells you is your transients are hitting zero, but the overall, everything else, all of the music is not louder. It's not as loud as you think it is. So the peak can be a little deceiving if you're not paying attention to how it reads, right? Like when we look at this guy, it's say I'm at like negative two. But a lot of that is kick and snare. If I switch to VU and I start listening to it, it's a similar thing, but I get a more a more honest reading of where the music is sitting. It's more so sitting around negative eight, and then the kick is kind of pushing up, right? So VU, you know, it will help you get a better like visual understanding of how loud the music is and what you should be doing to the music. So like in this case. I might need to, instead of, you know, driving everything up louder or as loud as the kick, might need to bring the kick down and then do some parallel or some side chain compression to where the kick can, you know, come through the mix as opposed to it sitting on top of the mix. Is it controls? Oh, I got you, man. Control save. So um, instead of having our kick, you know, be so loud, um, do that. Now, another thing about meters and, you know, making music, I am in a garage. <laughs> I'm in a garage primarily mixing my music and listening to my music on these headphones. Uh, this is the ATH uh, from Audio-Technica. Uh, I've, I've seen these headphones around a lot, like just like on different TV shows and stuff like it's just one of those things like, wow, I didn't notice so many people use those headphones until I started really using them. But I'm saying this to say I'm listening to it on headphones and this is not like a grand studio with like a bunch of hardware, you know, software. It's just pretty much minimal what I can use to get my music out. You have to like mix and do things to where it sounds good. Listen to it export it listen to it on something else you can't trust just the meters you can't trust you know just the loudness meters and everything like that you have to really listen to it and like in a different environment you probably could mix and master your stuff to a different level of quality also with that um i was saying something about the meters also with that music today as it's being generated is pretty much like it's not as technical as it may have been in previous, you know, years or in previous, you know, versions or in just previous studios. Like everything is not as pristine as it should be. Like a lot of times people will have 808s and stuff peeking into the red and like, it's about a feel and it's about a sound. It's not about the technicalities. So like reading the meter is important, but it's like in today's music, it's not, no one is looking for a pristine sound. They're just looking for it to sound good. It's like, hey, if it, if it hits hard and it sounds good, then it's good. It doesn't matter if it was at zero. It don't matter if it was at negative 14 LUFs. Like the technology, the, the terminology and the technical parts, they tend to not even matter. When you play your track and you play somebody else's track, do they have the same volume? Is your track thin? Does your track, and that's what I'm saying, like a lot of stuff, 
you'll get to like really mix and stuff like it's like okay if i set my kick exactly how this person had their kick set it's gonna be peaking it's gonna be in the red it's gonna you know it's not it's gonna have the sound but looking at the doll i'm looking at it like oh man i don't like seeing that red or i don't you know it just feels like this is gonna be nasty this is gonna have distortion or whatever and um it won't be the case you just put a nice little soft clip at the end with on your limiter and then you just push everything to zero and um is you get that thump you got that thump you're good to go that's you know that's that's all that matters um do you use subgroups some some tracks i use subgroups some tracks i use subgroups some tracks i don't use subgroups um it really just depends on what's happening sometimes it's more like like this in the manner of like where are my sounds what kind of sounds are they like i'm grouping them like this like by color it's like okay i know all my drums are over here and in that manner i think you're referring to maybe like buses for example and um i was watching another i was watching a, another youtuber talk about like doing buses and and things like that like, when i go to like bounce like say i bounce these mixer channels so i can have the stems so like whoever gets the track can like record on it and mix it and everything they can have all the sounds in their file um i could have a bunch of buses and then now it just becomes you know why do i have these buses here like what is the reason for these buses so if i had like an acoustic drum set for example in reason and i had everything in my mixer separated i had the kick the snare the toms the hi-hats the ambiance the the ambiance mics the overhead mics the kick mic like if i had all of these different mics and every i'm tuning everything that i'm definitely going to want to have a bus i'm going to want to bust that so that way um i can just turn those drums up or down i can apply a compressor directly to the bus that will affect all of the instruments right all of the different files and things of that nature so it really is a case-by-case -case scenario uh in this case it might, it might be the case where i'm going to take okay here's my drum bus and here's my instrument bus i might do a, a new group right there and it's like, okay here's my drum bus and my instrument bus because now i'm going to parallel my kick drum into that instrument bus so that way my kick can come through uh um, come through the mix a little bit better so there's just use cases for it it's never like a it's never like a one step um you know like a all you know just like a one shoe fits all type situation sometimes i think in early in the beginning stages i was like okay cool i want to bus for anything that is like a piano or keyboard and i want to bus for drums and i want to bus for bass and i want to bus and it's just like you don't have to do the grouping like that right it's just no you could group like effects like it's like okay here's all my effects and i know i just want to be able to control the effects in this way if i do if i do like a lot of the same kind of sound then i'll do like a bus or a group like if i do like six trumpets and i'm trying to create this like loud feeling or like you know I'll do like a huge brass section then it's like okay cool do a bus for all of the brass the trumpet trombone tuba do a bus for it so that way it's like in the mixer i can see those files those sounds and then i can pull it down with the bus and then the last one would be like vocals so if you have like vocal stacks then you would do like a bus for that, right? You might have like a bus for, it depends on how you want to mix it or how you want to organize it. You might have a bus for each verse. Like I have verse stacks and here's my bus for verse one. And here's my bus for the course. And here's my bus for, because I have so many stacks of vocals that I'm creating all of these different buses. So it really depends on why you're doing it and it and and you know what you're using it for. So me personally, I'm only gonna have every you know a couple of different reasons why I might use a bus to group my sounds. And then just keep in mind with reason, because you have like combinators, you essentially can have multiple, like you can have multiple sets of buses. You know, like if I if I, you know, add in if I just add in a um where's this guy at? Oh guys, we got another one. We got another subscriber. If I add in shout outs to you, whoever you are, 
Let's let's just watch that go to six. Okay, cool. Shout outs to y'all. Um, if I add in, trying to get to my combinator here. If I add in this combinator, and I'm looking at the mixer channel, like like just by adding in another line mixer, you have a bus, a bus, and another bus. Like you, when you think about bus, is like sends sending sound to a certain area. So if I have an instrument in here. I can send the instrument into this one. I can send this master out into this one. And like that's one layer. And then all of this is going back into this mix, which can then also go into another bus. So it's just like sometimes you don't have to use the bus on the sometimes you don't have to use the bus on the mixer channel. You can, you know, by cleverness put all of your instruments into a combinator combinate them you know combinate combine is the word combine them in a combinator and then patch them through these different you know audio signals and in that way that's another way that you can do the grouping so instead of having it in your main mixer you just have it in this mixer or you have it in this other mixer it's um it's just options is what I'm is what I'm clarifying. You know, there's there's different options that you can use to send your audio throughout all of these different you know ports and all of these different plugs and channels. Reason doesn't get the full reason doesn't get the full respect it deserves. It's so easy all the way around. Many, 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 many hits have been produced in reason. Shout outs. And, you know, I've had that I've had that conversation as well about reason in general, just about like, you know, who uses reason, why they use reason, you know, why, why certain people use it and what they enjoy about it. And um, some people won't tell you that they use reason for whatever reason, pun intended. Some people look at it as like it's not that main doll. It's not the main doll that everybody talks about. It's not Ableton. Uh, you know, it's, it's it would just surprise me the amount of people that struggle to use Ableton because of the name Ableton rather than use something else that they would prefer to use. But it's like, oh, what you make your beat? What you make your what you make your beats? I was sounding real country. What you make your beats in? <laughs> What you make your beats in, man? I make my beats in Ableton. Oh, dope, dope, dope. Oh, let me hear some. What you make your beats in, man? I make my beats in Reason. Reason? What? What is that? And it's like, oh, what you make your beats? Well, you know what? You, man, I sound so kind. What you make your beats in, man? I make my beats in FL Studio. Oh, for sure, man. Damn, you got them bangers. You got them trap bangers. Like it's just like, it's just like it just becomes this thing. This 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 automatic understanding of the track because of the doll that you use right but it's one of those things that it really shouldn't be that way it should just be amongst music producers we all know the difference and we know the reason why somebody would choose to use reason over another doll but amongst you know it just becomes one of those things what do you record your songs in you know it, it would be it's it, it really surprising to see people record entire songs in FL Studio versus in in Pro Tools, for example. But if you took that FL Studio and was like, oh, what'd you record your vocals in? Or I did it in FL Studio. Like some sound engineers or, you know, some levels of people, what? Okay, we finna redo all this in Pro Tools. Or we finna drop the stems in Pro Tools. Like, it's like, we're not finna go through that. Like, we're not finna go through that. You could record an entire song in Reason, you know, and... and and have the flexibility to, you know, use your rack to have, you know, huge stacks of of vocal effects chains of EQs and compressors and just all kind of stuff going down your your vocal chain. Um, you could you could use that if you wanted to. But then, like I said, oh, what'd you what'd you make this in? I made it in a reason. It just doesn't it just doesn't have that je ne sais quoi. It doesn't have that, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't have that thing, <laughs> I guess, that some people would be looking for when they say, Oh, what'd you make this in? You know, they're expecting to hear you say something different. 
And then it's this other thing, too, about, like, sound quality, right? Like, some people, like, they swear that, like, some dolls have different kinds of sound quality. When when you are a producer and when you make music, like, no, you know, the, the difference is not really about the actual doll it's about the sounds you're using and how you're using your sounds if you you can have a stock piano from reason and you can say oh wow that doesn't sound good you know and it'd be like oh well what why doesn't it sound good oh well it sounds thin okay why don't you add some bass into the piano why don't you bring in a saturation and add some warmth why don't you do something to the actual sound oh wow it sounds really good now wow actually this stock piano sounds just like alicia keys from contact it's like oh all i needed to do was be a producer <laughs> i just needed to actually like do something to my sound oh i don't like this piano oh, it's not bright enough oh really oh that's interesting well did you like add some treble like did you add some presence in the high end like did you do anything to affect the sound before you said oh i don't like the way it sounds oh man i don't like reason i don't like this dog because it sounds like it's like pushing and pulling my music you know it sounds like Everything is so squashed and compressed. It's like, well, are you using a compressor? Yeah, I'm using a compressor. Well, why would the DAW be the reason why your music sounds like that? Your music probably sounds like that because of the way you have your compressor set. <laughs> it's like there's a reason for why things sound the way that they sound. You know what I'm saying? And um, I think the difference is is the stock versus like the outside usage like okay for a long time you couldn't get vst3 on reason so that could be a that could be a a, a valid you know gripe that somebody would have is like i have these vst3 plugins that i want to use that i can't use because reason doesn't take it so yeah that would be something that you could argue against and you could say i gotta use a different dog because reason won't allow me to use it but if you if that's not what's holding you back and say you use different plugins, the stock argument is the is the question. What do the stock effects do and what do the stock instruments do? Because all of the dolls, you could just delete all of the factory sounds and the factory EQs and you could just have your native instrument bundle with your ozone or you could have your fab filter bundle to do your effects you have your native instruments to do your your sounds and your effects and you could just do everything from those third party plugins and everybody's music would sound exactly the same if everybody was if you make a beat with omnisphere and you're using the same fab filter plugins or using the same whatever everyone's beat is going to sound the same so it really matters when it gets to the stock effects so some stock effects just do what they're supposed to do and they're like wow that's perfect you get that sound every single time Fru fl studio fruity soft clipper you're gonna get that driven saturation that soft clips right before you clip every single time it's just exactly what everybody needs throw it on the master throw it on the kick throw it on whatever you're always gonna get that sound that you're looking for um different you know different you know different dolls will have different effects that work a lot better you know um different instruments uh, there's a lot of instruments well, i listen you know like a lot of libraries like for example logic's library even garage band for that matter like logic stock library garage band stock library i like the way that they sound they sound really good. I like a lot of the instruments that's presented. They sound really good. You can do a lot of MIDI stuff with those instruments because they sound good. Just like, you know what I'm saying? Reason as well had a lot of like acoustic sounding sounds. Rhodes, piano, guitar. Um, let me slide back on the guitar because they can do some work on some guitar. But, you know, bass guitar and synths galore, like synths galore. I think you could be hit or miss with with some factory sound bank uh, synths and, you know, acoustic sounds, you know, where it's like, OK, it's obvious that there's not a whole lot happening with this, you know, factory sound bank. There's not a lot of gigs, even when you go to install it, it's just there's not a lot of gigs happening here. So we can see that 
this is going to be a on the on the light side of things. Um, Ableton looks like Excel. I've heard that many times before. FL piano roll is godlike. Yes. Right. So that's a feature. That's a function. Right. Everybody has a piano roll. Not everybody's piano roll. Not all piano rolls are created equally. The way that they just they all of the instruments that you use in reason is like built into the the uh, piano roll. So it's like piano roll has an arpeggiator. That's an effect inside of reason. That's a utility inside of reason. You got to add the instrument. They have a you know, they have snap to chords. They have snap scale to snap to scale, right? Where you can just like snap to a certain scale. So C major, C minor, A flat, you know, Phygerian, whatever scale you set it to, it'll snap your notes to those scales. So they have that now, but that's always been in scales and chords, chord sequencer, polystep sequencer. It's just in the player. So all of the things, and I've said that, I said that from time to time before. I said, man, if they took, if they took polystep sequencer and they took the different things you could do with polystep sequencer and they added that to the piano roll and we would be in a different ball game. So, you know, it's definitely, it's definitely like, it's crazy. And it keeps getting better. It keeps, it keeps, it keeps getting better. It keeps doing more and more things. I do most of my beats and tracks and reason. It's just so solid. I think, I think it's solid right out of the gate. I, I think so. I use reason to make beats and studio one for recording. Okay. Interesting. Better saying I produce in Bitwig. <laughs> <laughs> but that's another thing right like a lot of people have been swearing by bitwig and you know they've been making some stuff and i just keep seeing tutorials pop up about it i keep seeing different stuff happening with it so it's coming along it's 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 literally like a mesh between studio one and um ableton from what i'm saying because they have that audition you know launch play kind of feature so like that's something that's there right um, the only thing about reason was late to the VST scene. Yep. They did. They didn't have VSTs at all. Then they had VST, but not VST three. So they was kind of late with that, you know, and for that matter, it's one of those things where it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, what do we, what do we say is our strong point with the doll? It's like, oh, the instruments, like even to this day, there's something right here under my eye. Even to this day, it's like, okay, cool. We're going to do something new in reason. Okay, what's it going to be? An instrument. <laughs> okay, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna drop something new in reason, guys. What's it going to be? An effect. It's like they, they are sound designers. They make instruments to be able to make new kinds of sounds. Synthesizers. It's heavier on the synthesizer realm and in terms of creating your own sound with their synthesizers it's heavier on that side than it is on sample based but I, there's a lot of sample bass there's a lot of sample based sounds that you know will kind of up up your music more like you know there's just sample bass is is gonna you know it's it's going to be a little different for you than synth. But a lot of different styles of music rely heavily on synth and rely heavily on having that modeled acoustic instrument sound where it's not sampled, it's modeled. It's it's synth synthesized, right? So it sounds like that instrument, but it's not that instrument object was like you know object as a uh, as an instrument that they released it's crazy the way that you can create those different kinds of sounds from a synthesizer crazy how you could get the organ that they have in there just crazy man like the sound is just really cool and it's coming from a synth so they're making this synth sound like something that's something that's in you know I think it's probably coming in real loud. But I remember the first time I heard the organic. I don't think that's the one that I want. That's monotone. What y'all doing? Hold on. Let me show you real quick. I just want to show object 
And then I want to show this patch. That's not it, though. I thought it was called organic. Oh, it's organism. Excuse me. I think it's this one. Really cool sounding, and then you 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 come in you come in here and you add in the ro rotary to get the rotary sound. And it will just go even beyond that because the percussion that you can get from it is just like really cool sounding as well. Wait, let me get ready. All right, I'm playing a beat. So just really cool sounding sounds. So that 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 is where their focus is at is creating instruments, creating synth, creating sound, so that people can be able to create music with that. So if that's where you're focusing, then of course your focus is not going to be on everybody else's sounds. It's not going to be on everybody else's VSTs. Like oh yeah, let's make it so that you can bring in all these other VSTs and then you never use Reason instruments again, or you only find certain times you use Reason instruments, or you're so deep into the contact library that it's like, man, I want to check out all the contact sounds and then you don't have the Reason, uh, you don't have the Reason instruments anymore. But there's a, it's been a lot of times where, because I know Reason so well and I know Reason sounds so well, it's like, I'm going straight to the thing I know. It's like, no, I know exactly how radical keys sound. I know exactly how to get the sound out of this instrument that I like. I know how to turn this acoustic guitar into an electric sounding guitar and at least have a little bit of semblance of, you know, oh, it sounds, you know, a little, you know, authentic to it. There's just different things that you can do with it. And so that's that. So, yeah, they, they didn't have a lot of VST support at first, but now it's there. Now recording audio is there. Sampling is there. Um, different different dolls rival the sampling capabilities of Reason because they have been bred to do sampling. Um, it was funny, like Ryan Harlan had a video that said, I'm late to the sample party. And I was just kind of like, you know, you're right on time. It's just like the capabilities of Reason is like being pulled into that direction now where it's like if various before it was like what you could add in is what you could add in but with with mimic made it to where it's like okay what other dolls have been able to do with sampling now you can do it with mimic and you can get that sound that you're looking for like i was always i was always tripping out on like i listened to like kanye west beats or different beats different people that sample I would listen to the, like these like really high pitched, really high pitched samples. And I'm like, man, this is literally what I would say to myself. How do they get it, get it to be so high pitched, but not be so fast? Because in traditional sampling and traditional samplers, the higher or lower you do your pitch, it's going to play the sample faster or slower. So Mimic adjusted that for a reason, whereas like, OK, if you play the pitch, you can play the pitch at whatever tempo and whatever motion that you want it to be in, either upping your pitch or lowering your pitch, you can still have the same tempo of the sample. So it's it's so that that is important. 
that's important that you have that. So and before you didn't necessarily have that. You had different sampling algorithms where you could play around with it, but other dolls just had that right away where it was just like, oh yeah, you want to stretch this. Time stretching is the word I couldn't get out for the life of me. Other dolls had better time stretching, right? And now it's like in the instrument mimic, you can do that great time stretching. And it's almost, it almost is it's so weird because it feels like with all of this stuff happening, it was like the grand scheme of things was we're going to make it so that people can use reason in other dolls. So like people have been trying to use other VSTs and reason and reason is like, we're going to put our entire rack into your doll. And it's like this reverse osmosis thing. So now it's like you have mimic where you can you have mimic right where you can have your you can have your sample whatever that sample is and well i don't want to use any of those because i don't want youtube having any issues um let me see this no i don't have that in there all right cool let's just go back to mm. Okay, cool. So now you have Mimic where you can take your sample or, you know, whatever it is, and you can just automatically slice it. You go to slice mode. You can just automatically have these different slices there. And now you can, you know, slice up Mimic. You know, you can slice up your sample. And like I said before, if I do pitch mode... When I change the pitch, it changes how fast and how slow it plays. But now with Mimic, I can change my time stretch and I can have this guy be really, you know, pitched up high. And even though it's pitched up higher or low, it doesn't play slower. It plays the same tempo. And that's important because that's the main part of, you know, the sample process is like, how fast can I come in here and get some chops of this sample? And so you just imagine that being in somebody else, being in another doll, having that in the reason rack and being able to just go in there and just... And just really stretch that. I like to do the speed really, really low. Even lower than that, where it's just like. And if you got that, you know what I'm saying, now mm -hmm. you can, you know, really do some sampling and really, you know, have some fun with that stuff, right? But it's just one of those things like, oh, can you do that in the sequencer? Like, yes, but no, use Mimic. Like, <laughs> the instrument, the instrument, use the instrument, right? Use the effect, use the player, you, use use that stuff instead, you know, that, that, that's, where it, that's where it really comes in. Mr. Frosty Beats, what's up, man? Mr. Frosty Beats up in here, man. Shout outs to you. Okay, I was trying to go through the through the um try, trying to go through the chat real quick. Also need punch in recording. Yeah. I mean it kind of has punch in recording with comp edit. With with comp editing, you can you can kinda do the punch in, kinda if you're recording. 
I won't get into that though. But you know, comp editing, you can you can like set it up. But I think there's better better ways you can do punch edit punch recording. So yeah. Do you work in blocks or just use it for labeling sections? Pretty much just labeling sections. Um, that's the most that I've used it in. If I don't use it to label sections, here I'm gonna save this guy real quick. I'm gonna load up this other um I'm gonna load up this other one. If I don't use it to label sections, then I use it for different types of tracks. Like I'll make different tracks with the same instruments, or I'll make different tracks with different instruments, but like they are serving around the same purpose. So like here's one way that I would use blocks if I was like producing for one particular artist like the name of this file would be oh these are beats for Summer Walker and then in my block mode it would just be all of the beats for Summer Walker that I used to create and the reason why I would do that is because I would probably have like similar drums similar snares similar you know um I would just have similar sounds and so because I have similar sounds that's why I would just do it all in one reason file using blocks. And so the way that you get around, you know, some of the issues, you got to do like your tempo. You got to edit, edit, automate your tempo. So like in this file, this is a file about sampling and reason. So you have the NN19, NNXT. Here's a different track with Mimic. Here's a different track or Dr. Octorex. Here's a different track with Kong. Like this is pretty much how I would use blocks um in that way i never like go into a block the intro block and create the intro and then come back to song structure and then drop that i never really do it like that there's a way you know there is a way that you could do it like that and if your mind or your brain works better like that then you absolutely could do it like that because there's some advantages there's there's a lot of advantages to using block mode because if you use block mode when you come in here, you can do a lot more in terms of structuring or sequencing, right? Um, if you have it really set into block mode. So there's different things that you could do. So I'm going to copy this, for example. I'm going to go into block mode. And I'm going to just go to like another block. Here's block 10, for example. So we got block 10 right here. And if I was to just come back out of block mode and go back to my song structure mode, I'm going to just move all of this over here. All right. So now I got block 10. Oh, here's my intro, I should say. So here's block 10, all right? And block 10 is just like all of this part of the track, right? Well, I can I can use this and then, you know, I can like say I want to do like a weird like stutter sound or something with all of the you know like the different parts of the track or something like that so I can come in here and make this really really tight like this I can come in here and just like duplicate this over because now it's duplicating all of those sounds right and like maybe you wouldn't do that because that sounds kind of crazy for an R&B track but maybe you would do something similar I don't know um so you, you would have that option, right, to be able to do like like a crazy little stutter or something. And it just takes the entire block. It just takes that entire block, right? So that's like one way that, you know, you could do something like that and have some fun with it. Um, you could also just like rearrange that block, right? So now we have this. And because you're like working with the block, it just takes all of that sound all together. And you can also just have it here. So like I, I got the whole beat, but I know for um, the first part of my track, I don't want any snare. I don't want any kick. So I can just literally like draw over it with another clip like this. And now it just deletes all that. And so even though it's all built in the block, I can still sequence in the song mode. So now here's my drums. Okay, cool. Okay, so then now for this part, I want to take out this. Uh, I want to take this part out. See, I just took out the little. Um, um, bump, 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 bump. I can mute it, unmute it. 
and this is the kind of stuff people be asking about. Like, you, if you make a, a title of Reason 12 Ultimate Tutorial, which is clickbaity at this point, if you do something like that, you got to show more, you know, examples of stuff like this, right? Like, I would think so. So there are some advantages to using block mode. I, I, I personally, sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. Nine times out of ten, I'm going to just use it to label the track out. Like, I just use it to label the track. So I got to undo all of this that I was doing. But while I'm undoing it, I can read some more. Him downstairs says, no more simps, please. Oh, you know the next thing they do. You know they finna do another synth. You know they finna do another synth. I don't think they're going to do any. I don't, I, don't, I don't think a sampling... I don't think a sampling unit would would come before another synth would come. Like I don't think a, a sampled instrument library, a sample library, I don't think that would come before another another like synthesizer would come. I think another synthesizer is coming. I started with the MPC 2000 XL, and now I'm on Reason with the plugins I use. Uh, I can get that dirty antelope sound. Dope. Dope, dope, dope. We need MIDI routing in Reason as soon as possible. I'm tired of using Blue Cat's audio. <laughs> <laughs> uh no more sense please yes um reason needs to do what ableton did basically copy food <laughs> hey that's funny just copy just copy they just copy a piano right that's funny object is awesome would love to see them make a modeling synth for wood, reed, brass, and maybe voice formats. That's interesting, Matthew, because Object, I think Object can pretty much do all of those things as is. They can do all those things right now. So, yeah, Object is dope. You can do all that stuff. And then don't forget, like, I think they have, like, one main guy um, that has a video demonstrating that you can use Object with your microphone uh to actually like create the sounds but yeah that's a that's a thing that's still there you can still do that to create sounds um let me see real quick i can't see i need this to be larger so i can see um object is awesome yes i said that one fl studio users seem to make better trap beats because of the dark sound of fl studio Reason should remix the sound of F of Reason Studios and make a second program Reason Black. <laughs> hey yo, Reason Black, they just need to redo the whole theme, right? Um I hear what you're saying. And the, the, this is the interesting thing about about th this is the interesting thing about it. If you say FL Studio sounds dark, then what you're essentially saying is their synths and synth presets sound darker. So what we would need to do is find the dark presets and patches and instruments in reason and highlight those. There are a lot of like high pitched and like belly sounds in reason um, that even have this like playful feel to it. So I think I can get you. I think I get you with that in terms of the sound. But it's not the sound of the doll. It's the presets. It's the patches. Um, like you can find a patch that has that low growl or, you know. Even like the brass, for example, like if you took the brass in orchestra and you pitched it down and then maybe you added in um maybe you added in like a scream or something like that like you could get that trap brass you know you can get that trap brass same thing with like with IDA you could make like like 90% of the sounds that you would need to make you could just do a bunch of effects and stuff with that but that's interesting that that it would be the thought it just really takes me back to the whole idea about um fl studio um people people thought that fl studio had a better sound from certain versions to other versions and then fl studio does a whole video debunking that myth and and essentially what happened was on the stock when you first open up the file in i think it's a reason i think it's fl 11 when you first open it up they have a fruity they have a fruity limiter and the fruity limiter 
has like three or five more DB that it just adds to the overall track from the jump. But in later versions of FL Studio, they took that extra DB off. So people would say, oh, FL hits harder. But it was like, no, you can have, you can have it hit the same exact way. You just got to add in more DBs. You just got to add in that fruity limiter and add in those DBs. So it's an interesting conversation to say, like, like Reason Black. Like, that sounds cool. That's why I laugh, because the name sounds cool. And it probably would, like, from a marketing standpoint, from a marketing standpoint, like, they moved away from, because I think it's a lot of pop and EDM and, like, techno and, like, dubstep. I think, like, a lot of, like, different producers or even, like, dance. And, like, if you look at their library, it's, like, they have a trap library. And I was look, looking at it, and I was just, like, it has trap rhythms, but, like, this is not, this is not exactly trap. You know, it's kind of, like, trap adjacent. So I could definitely tell that it was like, you know, people that don't make this kind of music making these kind of presets and patches. So if you did a Reason Black, right, and it was like tailored to that style of music, you know what? I think that's a good idea. I, all of that work around for me to just say, yeah, that would be a, from a marketing standpoint, that would be a genius idea to just market Reason as a certain program platform to use to make certain beats and then just tailor it right tailor it all around a specific sound highlight the sounds for that genre and then you have more people you know what i'm saying cooking up with that genre that would be interesting that would be interesting Reason is the goal for sound design. Absolutely. Has anyone brought the MPC2 live into Reason or Reason into the... Uh, no, I haven't used MPC live. Uh, Mimic is a staple in just about all my production. I pretty much... Like, I, I swapped out in in 19 NNXT. Um, I swapped all that out for, for Mimic. Anytime I'm like loading in a one shot, I'm loading in Mimic. Sometimes I'll even like instead of doing redrum, I'll do mimic. But for some reason, redrum with the sequencer and everything just always calls back to me. So I always end up using that. I need to get a chair for Christmas. This chair is like. <laughs> um, Serato is the business. Serato is a game changer for that style of music production. Absolutely. Uh, there's producers that make dark trap and reason. I can make dark trap and reason. Go check out Seven Eighty. Seven Eighty definitely makes a lot of dark trap and trap that has that that feel, that vibe to it for sure. I agree. Um, I originally used blocks for just labeling sections too. It wasn't until I started making beats that changed tempos and feels, etc. Okay, for sure. And and that's like one of the one of the you know one of the advantages of using blocks is you can go into that block, change the tempo of just that block. And then when you pull it back into the song structure, now you have like just this block that's like, you know what I'm saying? Late, you know, just this block that's like slower and whatnot. Um, just a little reason history. Pharrell, Dr. Dre, Stargate, top tier producers made plenty of hits with reason, but in all honesty, it's preference. It's always interesting when I hear like I hear like um loops or like sound effects or even drums. I'll hear that stuff and I'll go, oh, that's in reason. It's like, oh, that's that is definitely guitar loop one, <laughs> you know, C major guitar loop, like it's like, oh, that is definitely that loop in reason, like, and it happens a lot. It happens a lot in music production. So um, I don't know if it's the dolls borrowing each other's sounds and stuff like that, but I've heard, especially in like, uh, especially in like, if you hear like the sync licensed music, like music that's like in a movie, like moving from scene to scene, they'll add in some music or something like that. I'm like, oh, this is all reason. They definitely use reason to make this music. 
And um, I, it's always funny when I, it's funny because as a producer, as a person that uses Reason, I can recognize it. And it's like, that's from Reason. I could search that in Reason right now and find it. Um, I absolutely cannot use blocks. <laughs> uh, Rock Roller uses Reason now. Like you said, it's what you're comfortable with. Yeah. I watched Steph Nitty. He's good, but there are guys in FL that, are making better beats okay um my guy mars who made nipsey hustles uh hustle and motivate is reason gang too yeah my guy mars i met him at um at the event it was a reason and uh what's the other people now i can't think of them people name but essentially it's like a library platform that they were coming out with and uh, i met him there and he was making like a drill drill track like live you know what i'm saying he was showing how you can like it's like a splice audio library and he was showing how you can like search different genres and pull the genres into the beat and make the beat with reason he was doing everything live and um he was kind of showing some different stuff and reason that he does and um he's always on instagram always on youtube he's always showing you know his music that he's been making he's one of those kind of like hit producers that still shows people like, okay, here's this new beat that I'm working on and just plays it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but that's funny. I absolutely cannot use block mode. b -Hoss, what's up, man? We hit 6,000, bro. Let me see something real quick. Is this going to turn? Oh, 6,000. Hey, shout outs. Let's run our little celebration one more time. Here we go. Boom. We did it. We doing it. Okay, back to the chat. All right, here we go. So, um, chat says, that's interesting. How did you learn the fine editing details and reason? <sighs> practice, man. Just practice. Just trying stuff. I think, I think that question was asked towards me. Trying. Trying. Practicing. Just trying it. Just trying it. Reason is more of a tinker doll than a drop a preset and go doll. Exactly. It's like, yeah, the more you tinker with it, the more you find stuff, learn stuff, and, you know, you just kind of grow and evolve. You also could just find your core, like, six sounds. Find your core six sounds that you know you want to make beats like this and just do your core six sounds and just rock out like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, use the same drum, drum pad. Use the same pad, use the same bass, use the same 808. Like, just use the same sounds and then just, you know what I'm saying, just, just go with it, right? Like, you can also just do that. Get the polystep sequencer. It helps with the kick and hi-hat rolls. Plus, you can keep everything in key with it. Yeah, polystep sequencer is a beast. Beast. Um, polystep sequencer is that... I think that's that thing that was like, okay, we finna implement a lot of these things we see in piano rolls, and we're gonna put it into a player. And um, you also gotta remember that players can play with each other. So like, you can use poly step sequencer with other players as well. Um, but you can send everything to a certain key. You can create chords with it. Like you can essentially do like a, uh, you can essentially do like a version of chord sequencer with poly step sequencer like in terms of just building chords and stuff like that so like if i go over here to reason i'll show you guys also with it being in key like that's the other major part let's get out of c minor let's go to something else f sharp minor i guess i don't know turn this guy So now we got this. We got this. Let me solo this guy. We got this little chord here. Of course, we can move the chord around. Move it around again. We got these different chords you can play. And then when you come in here to form, you can change the form so it plays something different. And each form is something else. 
a different type of chord. You can go to the reason manual. It'll tell you exactly what chords is each form. It'll tell you like it's a sus two, a sus four, it's a seventh, it's a ninth, it's a this, it's a that. And then you just got to add more notes. So as you change the form, it changes the inversion, changes what notes is what note is being played, what note is not being played. So you can have just a bunch of different chords in here as well. And then what you could do if you add it in a different player you can create an art but you can do that in poly step sequencer automatically and then you can just have more repeats or less repeats I like doing stuff like this. But you gotta change this to something else or like add something to it. I don't have my headphones on. Either. Oh, damn. I hope I wish I took your headphones off. I was trying to do this revert. Then you can just change everything to a whole nother key. And you also can just slow it down. I think this one sounded the best.
So I love poly step sequencer because you can like just really get into it and do some stuff, man. It could turn the strum off. I would love to see more audio editing features and reason and the video feature. I would love to see the video feature too. I would love to I would love to see that. Nitty Beats use the Octo Rocks loop to make uh Patron? Patron by Young Jock. Exactly. Airbnb trap. No, the sound engine in each DAW has a slightly different sound. Pro Tools sounds different from Cubase. The sound engine in Reason is very bright. FL engine sounds darker. That's interesting. Somebody said that. Somebody, I, that might have been you, DL, actually. I was thinking about the UAD. Okay, you guys are talking about the interface for, um, for that. Um, a number one of them. I'm a big Focusrite fan, so I direct you to the Focusrite. Uh, but there really are so many good ones out there. It may be a matter of what capabilities do you want. Yeah, and plugins that come with the interface, the audio interface as well. Um, Focusrite has a deep, a decent preamp. Um, if you're like, once you get past the solo interfaces, like if your interface only has one input then in my opinion it's like the budget version of it and so it's gonna have like it's just for one microphone it's just gonna be limited it's not it's not gonna have the greatest preamp in it even if they say they use the same preamp in all of them it's just not once you get into like okay it has four inputs or more or two inputs or more um then you're going to be working with something that costs a little bit more and it's going to be a little different, a little, a little better for you. That's just in my opinion. From the different reviews that I've done, the different uh, interfaces that I've used, if you're doing a solo interface where it's just one input, it's not gonna, it's not gonna really have the sound that you that you want. The ones that have more than one input is gonna have a better sound because they're gonna cost more, and that that just goes into it. Like somebody will try to tell you like, oh, you could buy like the cheapest budgetest like interface that they have. And that's going to sound the same or sound just as good. And it's just you could you could say that, but it's just not true. It's just it's just it's not true. It's not true. So. Different interfaces have different. um functions that come with the higher end versions of them as well so like there is like a 4k button that comes on um i want to say the sl let me see this real quick what's this thing called Man, my guy Catchy Noise Production talks about it all the time. <sighs> Solid State, this one, that's the one I'm thinking about. 
So like on this solid state, for example, they have this like 4K button that's there, right? And that is supposed to like increase your brightness or like increase a certain kind of frequency when it goes into the channel. And that's something that is they have that in different interfaces right and it's for different types of instruments some sometimes it's better for microphones sometimes it's better for uh instruments like guitars and stuff like that right but even just having that you know is, is a feature because it's like a a higher model of you know this interface right this 4k model um the newer versions of the focus right scarlet Um, they have something similar as well, like this one. It's like this is this is one of those solo. It's just one mic. It's just like don't do it. Just don't just don't do it. Don't do this either. Don't do these bundle things. This is just my opinion. I don't, somebody had to talk me out of it. But the microphone that you could get, the headphones that you could get somewhere else, just don't. Just don't do that. Just don't do that. Take that money and just buy the four for I four and then and then get you a microphone and headphones that you really like. It seems like a really good deal. Like, wow, I get an interface with a microphone and headphones. But man, a lot of the times these bundles, they don't be as good as you would like them to be. Like You would expect them to be like really, really great, like really, really good. And the truth of the matter is the thing you're purchasing is the interface. You're purchasing the interface. You're not purchasing the microphone and headphones. The thing you really are purchasing is the interface. So that means everything else is so it's like free. Like look at the cables like you get cables and headphone and microphone. Like it's like, whoa, I get everything for one price. It's just like, listen. Listen, buddy, even audio cables would run this number up, <laughs> like even just the audio cables. So we saying you get just the device for 120 for one hundred twenty dollars. You get three more things with it. So we're saying for one hundred twenty dollars, we're going to give you a forty dollar pair of headphones, a forty dollar microphone and forty dollar cables. Essentially, I know there are cables out there that cost forty dollars. A microphone that costs forty dollars, I would tell you to run away from. Headphones that cost forty dollars, Mike could do what you needed to do, but that would be like the justification, right? If this is one twenty and this is two forty, where, 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 where is the quality gonna come from? You know, unless they, unless you think that Focus Right just loves you. <laughs> I was like, uh, they, they love us. They love us so much that they was like, hey, buy this and we're going to give you this headphones and mic. It's just, no. Buy the interface. The interface is great. I want to upgrade my interface so bad. I'm so like, I just want to, I, I just want to upgrade it. I want to upgrade it. I don't even think a four is enough is the problem. Like to, to upgrade from the two. I have the two. I don't even think to upgrade to the four is enough because I'd be wanting to like mic up my drum set and just do a whole bunch of stuff. And I don't even think that that would be enough to actually do that. I think we would need to do more than that. SSL 4K reference is the 4K uh, console. Cool. Uh, the room makes a big difference. Also, you can have a great interface and mic, and your room will mess up the recordings. Man, say that two times. How you how you treat your room is going to make a huge difference, like not recording in a garage or if you're recording in a garage, like make sure your garage is like laid out right. And you got like a booth or something for your for your music, you know, for your for your microphone, like something of that nature is, is going to really help out a lot. Listen, y'all, are we going to we hit we hit six thousand eight. Shout out to everybody. Let me put my celebration up one more time. You know what I'm saying? Put the celebration up uh, because we hit uh, 6,000 on the live stream. Um, 
shout outs to you guys for coming through. I appreciate y'all uh, for that. I'm finna give me something to eat. If you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We do offer one-on-one -on -one, uh, Zoom sessions that you can purchase. You can grab those one-on-one -on -one Zoom sessions by going to chrisrebeats.com. Um, and hopefully we'll be doing a lot more of those in the coming year because um, it's a lot of fun. And I have a video that I'm putting together of like all the like a couple of different times that I've helped some people. Um, so hopefully we'll have more people come through to do that as well. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and the cook up that we did and checking out some of the recent instruments uh, as well as the beat that we created. Shout outs to y'all. Shout outs to 6,000 subscribers, man. Man. Until next time. Thanks for watching. Peace.